In today's video, I take a last minute decision to photograph the strawberry moon. And then afterwards, I'll show you the processing it did in Lightroom. Hello, a short one today. Last minute decision to photograph the strawberry moon. It's just coming up above the trees from my bedroom window. I've set the camera up. It's on a little bit of video just now to show the movement of the moon. I'm taking pictures of it just above the trees. It's just above the trees outside. I'm just managing to get it before it disappears behind the window frame. I think I'm managing. Oh, it's quite bright on the screen just now. Because I've had to put the lights out so you can actually see what I'm looking at. But I think that's okay. You can see how red it is on this. It's really dark outside. I can't adjust the, uh, the exposure on the camera on the phone but it is getting quite dark. I don't think I can adjust it. Hold on. So that's more like how it really is. And that's the effect you get. So it really is quite bright. I'll zoom in through the window. And that's what I'm guessing. Let's just do it outside. Yeah. Handheld's a bit wobbly. So the downside is I've actually got uh, power cables running right through the moon. But I think I might be able to take those out. I might just leave them in. Uh, it's not going to get far above the trees. But it's soon going to be out of view from me because of the, the window frame. I no point photographing through the window. And I've been downstairs and I can't see it from down on the ground outside. Because I've got buildings in the way and it's not just out of sight. So still taking pictures, still got some trees in the foreground and then the moon above and it's still got a bit of an orange glow to it. I said to people today, oh it won't be strawberry coloured, it's just the name because of the season. It was strawberry coloured coming up, it's amazing. Really, really impressed with that. But on the camera now, it's actually showing as white. I take a picture little bit of orange on the actual image, but it's showing white on the screen, so I can adjust the settings. But it's now getting quite dark and I'll lose anything in the foreground. So that's a quickie, and what I've done, let's have a look at the settings. Quarter of a second, F16, ISO 1000. And for the first images, I'll show you what the ISO was for those, because I can't remember. <laughs> Time. I don't really want to be going chasing around to try to find a different view. I think if I move position it's going to be quite high above the horizon now, so there'll be nothing to give it any sort of perspective. So I'll just leave it at that. Good morning. I took some photographs last night, as you saw, and now it's time to do some processing. I actually cheated. I've done some processing already, did it last night, put them out on social media straight away, but I wanted to show you what I was doing and the issues with it. So I'm recording the screen just now. So if you look at the screen, this is as the images come into Lightroom and you can see that beautiful strawberry moon. And as I scroll down through them, you see it goes a little bit more orange as it goes up. And fortunately for me, what I did wrong was I didn't set the camera up properly it was in a bit of a rush the tripod wasn't really steady and it didn't have my shutter release and i couldn't remember how to get the timer to work it was looking like it was working in the menu but it wasn't working so i eventually went and got the timer release cable and i used that which you saw me using in the video but the pictures that you missed me taking i'll show you one here 
this is one of the first and it comes up looking just a little bit shaky it's not the best in the world and there's the big problem I have is the pylons but the pylon gives that nice sort of scale to it so you can see how big the moon is in the background but we'll work on this one anyway and I'll show you what it did so when it comes in it tends to adjust slightly and it's not quite as red as it was let's just take that back and see if it's still is red that's not so bad there so i've got that what i want to do is zoom in and you can see it's really quite grainy now what i was using was a quarter of a second at 600 millimeters and my iso was if i could find 800 straight off so it started off straight off 800 and went up to thousand so it's, it's a little bit grainy it's not the best in the world but with the new development within Lightroom, we have noise reduction, denoise. And I'm just going to look at this, look at the difference it makes there. Absolutely fantastic. And bring it down a little bit. Don't really need it that much. And then I click on that. And that will adjust and just pop into a beautiful image. He says, if it was originally taken without being shaky and properly in focus, it would come out as a stunning image. But for social media, looking on a small platform, it's probably going to be a lot better. It'll look a lot better, say, on your phone or whatever. So I'm quite happy to go with it as it is. So creating the DNG does take a little while, and that's it now finished. And zoomed in 100%, that looks still a bit soft but it's not as grainy as it was. Oops, I jumped it the wrong way. I want to click on there and get that image there. Now it looks okay. That's quite acceptable considering. But what I want to do now is, will it find the, I don't want to do the sky, I don't want the background. Let's just do a linear and just do this. Bring up the shadows so you can actually see some detail in there. That looks quite nice. That's okay. I'm quite happy with that sitting there. I've got a little dust spot here, so I'm just going to fix that little dust spot. Oh. That should be the dust spot gone. Checking for any more dust spots. I do have some that were showing up in other images, but that looks okay. So we just go to library, export that. And it exports as a an enhanced NR, which is the noise reduction. So the next one I want to do is this one over here, just as it's peeking out behind the clouds. I've got that one there, or this one here. Let's have a look at them. So I don't need to go into developer. I just look at that. It's a bit of a mess there. Got the next one. That's okay. So there's a mark on the screen here. It's probably been a bird or something flying by. I can take that out. Which one do you think? I think that one's better. It's not the one I chose last night. I chose that one last night to share. I'm going to go for this one. Do that. We want to denoise again. So this takes a while. So I will jump straight to the finished article after I click that. Right, now that that is done, I'm looking at the colour of the moon. And if I Bring this back to here. Now look at these two images. How pink the image is that hasn't been edited before and after the one that started to be edited. As you bring it in to develop, the raw file changes, makes it a proper raw file, instead of that sort of JPEG original image that you get, and the color has disappeared. So what I want to do is do a little radial gradient on the moon itself. Now, this isn't cheating, this is just getting it right. I'm taking the hue, I'm just doing that just a fraction. And what it can do is I can go and have a look at the other images again and see does it match now. So I'm looking at the original images on the screen that have come out the camera and the before and after they're a lot closer it's now a lot closer than it was. That one's still, so this one here, but I'll just light it up for you. This one here is just slightly more orange than that one. 
but it's this one here and that one mostly the same. They're pretty close, so I'm happy with that. Let's do develop back to develop. Because now what I want to do is bring up the shadow. And let's just see if we can just bring shadows up on this. That looks okay. That's not too bad at all. If I just do a brush again. Let's see if I can bring the shadows up without it all disappearing. I hate it when it does this. I'm doing something wrong. It didn't actually happen when it did this before. I could see what it was doing. So we're just going to take those bits there and bring the shadows up a little bit more so you can see the trees. Is there anything there to bring up? Yeah, that's okay. And you can see the focus is actually more on the trees than it was on the moon. I was trying to get it to infinity to be sure that the moon was in focus as well. It just wasn't there. If I go back to the moon, I could actually, should I do clarity a little bit? Clarity on that looks quite nice, not too, not too bad. I'll leave it at that. So that's the result. I'm quite happy with that. That's, am I, am I happy with that? Bring the trees up a little bit more. Because on this screen, I can usually see quite clearly what I'm looking at. That you bring up the shadows and it looks okay. And then you, on another screen, it, you can't see them very well at all. But what I'm noticing is I'm getting a bit of overlap. I'll just show you on the screen here. This area here in the sky is not looking as good. So I'm just going to take that exposure back again. I'll just deal with the, uh, the shadows itself instead of brightening. Switch that off. And we'll grab that one there. So that's two images that I've done. I uh, did about four last night. And I'm quite happy with them. Now what I did later was I took one of the images, I'll just show you here, which is a bit higher up in the sky. Uh, I think it would have been probably this one here. Let's see, just check that one there, maybe. That looks like it's already been adjusted, but it hasn't. So 91, picture 91 here. The moon is very, very gold. And you can adjust it a little bit, make it a little bit redder again. But it was actually becoming gold as it got, went up into the sky. So we'll just we can leave it at that just now. And I can simply do a linear all on the on here let's just bring that over a little bit that way take the shadows and there's very little shadows coming up and if i try to hide bring the highlights the exposure up it's going to change the sky so we don't bother with that at all we shall just leave it at that so that's two images. Uh, I hope you like what you see. At the end you'll see three or four images that I did and processed last night. Put out onto social media. I'm not going to cheat and show you different images to what I put out last night. Uh, it shows that you can just grab a camera and take images. If I had been more prepared, I would have got better images. And I did actually look at going out, finding somewhere with an interesting foreground, I even considered going into Edinburgh and getting the Edinburgh Castle, but I'm not an expert at this sort of thing, and I didn't know if the moon would even be above the castle. So, decided not to do that. It's too much for me. Uh, I'm having a good weekend. I've been ill for like nearly nine months with long COVID on top of my ME. This is a good weekend, but I don't really want to push it. And to be honest, I wanted to get into bed at my normal time, which is the back of 10, and when I went up, couldn't resist because we could just see the moon peeking up above the trees. So I came through here, grabbed my kit, put the big lens on and got those images. And it just, so it just shows you can get some good images or good images fairly easily, even unplanned. But had it been planned, it would have been a lot better. I'm waffling, so it's time to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. See you next time.